Okay, so today is perhaps the most mathematical heavy lecture. All right, so uh, if we happen, cannot capture all the formula or all the derivation, it's fine. Okay, so, um, but right now, let me just uh, say this. Again, conjugate gradient. And this is our problem to solve. So um, if we happen to not understand or follow all the mathematics derivation, so right now uh, I'm going to write down a summary, which I did last time, but uh, Okay, if, if we happen not to follow the math, just memorize this, all right. So if someone, for example, if you're gonna pursue grad school and uh, um, or to have an interview for some engineering company, a data science company, whatever, um, and they ask, okay, so tell me about conjugate gradient, I mean, it's, a state of art optimization method. First one is we search. Is we do our search in subspace instead of a line. Okay, so we search the minimizer candidate in the subspace. S. The second, second. So this, this is, a, this is a, a, like the idea. We should search not just in one direction. So originally we search in the direction of the gra negative gradient, okay, um, which is the function decreases fastest. Um, right now we're searching the minimum candidate in the subspace. The second one is uh, uh, we want to exploit The Q orthogonal. So we 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 want the basis of S to be Q orthogonal, so that uh, we'll see that the computational cost reduces greatly. But in in the in the proof, okay. Um, Like I said, if we happen not to follow the math, memorize these two. These are the gists of uh, CG. Okay. So now let's uh, uh, begin. Um, so um, last time we did our example one is dimension of S, this is last time, uh, and S is spanned by a single vector, okay, by a single vector P of K, which is uh, the, um, the negative uh, gradient direction at uh, K iteration. So now uh, let me, So now let me, um, so today, um, and by the way, uh, if we just search in a one dimensional subspace, uh, we got back to the steepest gradient. So now we, we change, okay? So we search in a K plus one dimensional subspace. So we have P zero, P one, uh, dot, 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 until p sub k, and I want to emphasize. So this this is a, a this is a notation given by the textbook. So the textbook normally call this p k, for example, a negative gradient. But in the C G context, okay, these are not just gradient. These are the search directions. Um, 
So not necessary gradient. They are not necessary gradient. Only this one is a gradient. Okay, so they are search direction of vectors. So this is a K plus one uh, dimensional space. And what we want to do is we find our X sub K plus one. Okay, so this is a K plus one dimensional subspace. So we want to find this iterate such that so it subtract our initial guess equals the projection of into this subspace but the pr we project uh, like using this q norm not uh, l2 norm so and X star is our minimizer. Okay. So basically, uh, I think there is a, so today what well, we're gonna, I haven't told you guys what today we're gonna derive yet. So let me, Give you so this is an algorithm. So today, uh, today our goal is to derive uh, algorithm five point three on the textbook. Okay. Which is the same algorithm we learned how to code last Friday. So we want to derive it. And essentially, we are going to uh, compute this. All right. So, and also think about, always think about this picture. So, this is our X star. And uh, suppose we start from here. This is X zero. Okay. So, think this line is our S. But now S is not necessarily one dimension. This picture is like our 2D illustration for an n-dimensional problem. So this is our S. This is our search space. And uh, what we do is we project, okay? So this is a vector. This is a vector X star subtract X zero, which is this guy we project this vector onto this uh, line. This is a subspace. I mean, it, I, I draw it as a line, but it may be like a two dimensional, three dimensional. So we project it and this, this orthogonal sign is Q orthogonal. And this is our new X K plus one. So I um, think I suck let this to be S sub K. So this, this is how we get our uh, K plus one iterate. So essentially it means and we can write something like this. So this tells us xk plus one subtract x zero is in this subspace, which means I can write as this subtract that we, we kind of expand whatever this vector is in, in this basis, okay? So what we have here is i from zero to k alpha i, pi.
and we make use of the projection definition. Okay, so we make use of the projection definition. Um, we project in Q norm. So what happens is, so let me write the formula right here. So whatever, so whatever vector, if we project it on the Q norm, we multiply it with Q and dot product with V is zero. And this V is any vector in this uh, uh, subspace S. So we use the same thing right here. So what we have here is Q times, this is the original vector, okay. So, but I mean, we can write this first. So it is uh, the projection. subtract the original vector dot product V is zero for uh, for any V in S. This is panel number three. So uh, let me write a three here. Panel number four. Let me see if the remote student has any question. Okay. Good. The initial guess got canceled. What's here is uh, X. Uh, this is our k plus one's iterate, and this is our best whatever minimizer. So we have q, and uh, we have a representation right here. So we have okay x zero, which is our initial guess plus the expansion of what's left in this basis. Subtract uh, X star. Dot product with B is zero. We re rearrange the terms a bit, all right? We rearrange the terms a bit. So what's happening is we can write this as Thought of sorry. So we rearrange the term a bit. And this term looks quite familiar to us. So if we have, let's say, uh, this is our f of x. Um, so If we take derivative, gradient f of x, we get what? We get uh, qx subtract b. But keep this in mind. Um, we'll always, um, so we'll always keep this in mind that this is our solution to the qx equals b solution. So, which means b vector is the same as qx star. I mean, we, we can exploit this uh, uh, many times during the deriv derivation of the uh, convergence, but uh, um, 
but this is essentially this. Okay. And I forgot uh, the textbook de uh, defined this as R of uh, so the textbook I forgot the textbook defined this as R sub zero or minus R sub zero. But uh, let, let's just uh, define this as R sub zero. So the textbook e either has a sign different with us, or uh, but uh, it, it's okay. So, and this is the residual vector. So that's the right side. The right side is essentially the residual vector, which is a gradient which is a gradient. This is essentially the gradient, the negative gradient. So let me move this a bit. This is essentially the negative gradient at our initial guess. I mean, if this is zero, which means the initial guess is already our solution. Okay. So if the residual is zero, it means we have reached our minimizer. Otherwise we have to do some work. So now let's look at the left side. The left side is Q matrix multiplied with the sum, I'm sorry, uh, Q matrix multiplied the sum of uh, the basis vectors. And this is any vector in S. Always keep this in mind. We can always choose this V to be one of the PIs. And here is the Q orthogonality come into play. If, So, now if we have the Q orthogonality, this is panel number five. So now if, the Q orthogonality of our basis is PI transpose Q PJ, and this is the same thing as Q times X, I'm sorry, P, uh, P sub I dot product with PJ is zero um, if I is not J. This is Q orthogonal, it's just a orthogonal. It's an orthogonal is a two vector dot product is zero. But here we have our matrix Q uh, in the middle. Um, so this is Q, right? This is V. And we simply, we let, we let our V to be one of them, like I said. Let V to be P sub J. So we let V to be one of the search direction. And now because the search directions, they are Q orthogonal to each other, if we expand the left, so we expand the left. So we have Q um, sum. So we have this uh, alpha zero, uh, P zero plus alpha one, P one dot 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 plus alpha sub K, P K dot with P sub J. I mean, if we look at this formula, if we multiply this sum with PJ, only one term will left. So I, are you guys with me on this one? This is one of the key of the CG. Why it greatly simplify our computational task is because of the Q orthogonality. So, 
we can we can we can further we can further write down something like uh, so that's panel number two okay panel number six. Let's see if the remote student has any questions now. Um, so we, we further, we write this down. It is a Q. So we can, we can pull out alpha zero, alpha to alpha K, they're just numbers. So alpha zero Q uh, P of zero times P of J plus alpha one Q of P of one times P of J plus dot 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 alpha K Q of P of K dot product with P of J. This is a left we expanded, so may, we may not need to the parentheses anymore. Right? Everything is linear, so we multiply this Q here, Q here, Q here, then, then we dot product with PJ. Because of the Q orthogonality, if zero is not, if J is not zero, this term is gone. Okay. So in the end, only one term will left, and that's the Jth term. So this is alpha J Q piece of j dot product with piece of j. And so this is the left side of this equation. And it equals the right side of the equation, which is, uh, um, which is right there. It's uh, r zero dot product with piece of j. All right. So this tells us alpha j is r zero uh, dot product. So uh, with p j, so we use a textbook notation transpose, and this is nothing but p j transpose q p j. This is our first formula. This just tells us our k plus one's iterate can be computed by this way. So let's look at the formula right there. It's the initial guess. So it's an initial guess plus a linear combination of the search direction. So we have a dimension K plus one subspace. We search like the minimum possible candidate, like the closest to the minimizer in this subspace. And this is our formula and alpha J is right here. Okay. So now we begin our next search. How do we begin our next search is, okay. So now given, this is panel number three. So to understand, um, So for those of you sitting here, maybe um, you have an, ac uh, an access to a textbook, but uh, for those of you who are remote, you can turn to the book like algorithm two, I'm sorry, 5.3. And this is uh, what we're gonna do now. So now we are at X K plus one, right? So we'll start our new search. 
we'll start our new search. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add one more vector to the search space. And we're gonna add this vector to the search space. So this is a, uh, this is what, this is a, uh, um, so Q, xk plus one subtract x star. And uh, it is a minus So minus rk plus one. Okay, it's our k plus one residual. And we're gonna add this vector to the search space. So the magic about CG is every time after one iteration, we add a vector to the search space. So This is panel number seven. If we add this space and we, we name this space S sub K plus one is a span of, uh, we keep the first K plus one search direction, which is P zero, P one, dot, 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 up to PK. And we add this vector to it. Okay. We add this vector to it. But we can't we cannot simply uh, use this R sub K plus one as a basis because it, it, it is a basis. However, it's not Q orthogonal. Keep this in mind. All our nice formula, this formula is so nice that we, uh, because when we evaluate here, almost every term is gone, only one term left. The reason is because we have Q orthogonality, but this guy does not have Q orthogonality, at least the two, two, one of them. Okay, later on we'll see this actually has Q orthogonality to almost all of them. So what we do is, we do grand schmidt okay, So this is a, uh, in linear algebra class, uh, how do we uh, orthogonalize vector? So we do grand schmidt But the grand schmidt we learned in linear algebra is just for regular orthogonal. It's for our regular L2 inner product. Here, we do grand schmidt but Q orthogonal. So we have span of, and we want to use this new vector to produce a new search direction such that um, it's Q orthogonal to everyone we already had. And let me check quickly if the remote students have any heat. What we're gonna do again. We add one more vector to our search direction space. But this vector is not Q orthogonal to at least one of them. I mean, intuitively it's not Q orthogonal to some of them. What we do is we do Grand Schmidt in Q norm to produce this vector such that this new space has this Q orthogonality, nice Q orthogonality. So what we do is we want, so want to find this new search direction vector and it's Q orthogonal. To every 
single search vector, search direction vector before it. So for J is zero to K. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a not a, a, some easy task to do. Okay. So, and let's recall um, what we had is we have a vector. Okay. So uh, we, we, we have a vector. And by the way, uh, this vector is not in the span of this space. Otherwise, we don't need this vector at all. Okay. So, what we're gonna do is we write this new vector as a linear combination, but because this vector is still in this space, okay? So because this vector is still in this space, what we're gonna do is we simply, we simply write, um, this vector as a linear combination of um, these vectors. So by the way, we don't need coefficient for, uh, for this one because, uh, um, so later we will see um, m plus beta, because it's like we add this vector. So this vector is somehow, this vector is somehow very similar to this vector, but we have to make a small correction. Plus beta uh, p sub k plus, come on. So this is j from zero to k plus gamma k minus one uh, P sub K plus one plus dot 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 gamma zero P sub zero. And we want this vector to be Q orthogonal to every single one of them, okay. So let's start with the last one. Let's start with K. So we want we want this vector to be Q orthogonal to the, to the last vector in our search space, okay. So now we plug in. Um, here, and what happens is, first of all, the left is going to be zero. So, so this is this is all we require. It's Q orthogonal. So uh, the left is going to be zero. And let's see, right? So right, we have um, we have this Q So it's like a, we, we, this equation, so if we write this is our equation number, let's say uh, equation number star, then what we do is we simply, we multiply uh, Q with star, uh, then we dot product with with P sub K. So not, not equal, but uh, let's say um, we do this. Okay. So it's like we multiply every term here with Q and then we dot product with P sub K. And here, what we have here is beta Q times P sub K dot product with P sub K. And then the rest term is actually gone. So, uh, but let me still write down.
the left we require it to be zero. Okay, the left we require it to be zero. The right we have this term. Uh, we have this term, and we have a bunch of zero terms. These are zero terms. So this we let it to be zero because this is what we want. So we want the left to be zero, okay? Um, because we wanna find a new search direction that's Q orthogonal to every single search direction before it. So that's why we want the left to be zero. The right, these terms, already zero. This is like a mathematical induction type of proof. This is our induction hypothesis because uh, I, I mean the S sub K has a Q orthogonal basis. So this term, this term right here, the Q P J dot with P K, J is not K, so it's gone because it's zero. We left is the, the sum of these two are zero. So uh, which we can solve for beta. So beta becomes negative. Uh, again, uh, we rewrite this dot product. We follow the textbook notation, the R transpose. So we have this is RK plus one transpose QPK. And the PK transpose QPK. So this is our beta. I mean, we, we have found one coefficient, so k to go. Uh, so we have found beta and k to go, gamma, k sub, uh, so what about? What about all those gammas? I mean, you guys maybe already have a hunch. Why I'm using a different letter for all the rest coefficient? Okay, it's because they are all zero. So what about these? These are all gone, but we still need to prove it. So here we have a lemma. So the lemma says the following. This is a final number. I'm not sure if I can finish proving the lemma um, in today's lecture, but uh, it's, in my, it's in my notes, uh, which I'll post. Um, and the proof is uh, it's not difficult, but uh, we, we need to sit on it for a bit to appreciate um, how it is formed. The lemma says the following. The lemma is quite straightforward. It's just the S sub K. So S equals S defined as S sub K, um, which is our span of K plus one Q orthogonal uh, basis. This is P zero dot 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 uh, PK. And these um, K plus one vector, they are Q orthogonal. So uh, Q orthogonal basis. All right. So what's happening right here is if we compute, so if we compute, um, So x k plus one subtract our initial guess as the projection the q projection into this subspace 
of our x star, which is our solution, subtract uh, this. Okay. So if this happens, and also we define this is panel number six. And also we define the residual vector. So also we define the residual vector um, as the negative gradient of, uh, of this new iterate. And it is, it is what? It is uh, uh, Q x star subtract this vector, okay? So we define, we define the residual vector in this way. Then something interesting will happen. Then something interesting will happen. Um, that is the number one, the residual vector, if orthogonal to every single p vector. This is not q orthogonal. I mean, this is a, uh, um, this is this is not hard to see. Uh, um, I'm getting a notification. So the second is most important. This is Q orthogonal. This is Q orthogonal to every single vector t o a minus one. The first one is not, uh, it's not difficult to prove. We actually, we have already proved it somewhere. It's because, it's because right there, it's because uh, by definition of projection. So proof, the first one, okay. The first one is quite straightforward. It's just a definition of projection. By definition of projection, we have Q times this vector subtract. So this is a projection vector subtract the original vector dot product with V is zero for any V in this S. Okay. So this tells us this tells us, let's look at the left. The left is just RK plus one. So the left is uh, is RK plus one. Uh, so this is a RK plus one dot with V is zero. So we're good because we just choose V. So now we just choose V to be um, where P 
subject. So we're good. Okay. So difficulty is the second one. So essentially, we want So let me see if I can uh, prove this in two minutes. Okay. Okay, but uh, So now let's uh, prove two. So for two, uh, we have to note, notice one thing. So for I, um, from zero to, to K minus one, we have this is X I plus one equals uh, X sub zero uh, plus so we have this. It's like at every iteration we do this projection. So what happens here? What happens here, it tells us, so it's like, a, a, so for example, at, a, a, at the first iteration, so when i is zero, we do x1 subtract x0 equals the projection of to s sub zero to of this q x star subtract x zero. Okay, this is our first iteration. Then when i equals one, it's x2, subtract x zero equals a projection. So we add one vector into this uh, uh, search space and we get this and etc. okay. Now, if we isolate, okay. So let me finish this part. This becomes xi minus, I'm sorry. This is xi plus alpha i p. So let's continue on Friday. So let's spend an extra uh, 10 minutes to finish the proving of this on Friday. And then we'll learn how do we learn, uh, how do we apply CG to general like function, not just uh, this quadratic function, okay? So that's it for today. And on Friday, so we're back to our uh, remote in which we'll learn how to code CG for general uh, function, which will uh, solve the coding part of the homework. <laughs>